after many weeks of speculations, we can finally order the Apple M2 MacBook Air. But I can't be the only one out there who's confused about which specs to go for. How much RAM? How much disk space? Do I need a fast GPU? How many cores? What is a core? <laughs> Just kidding. So I've put together this video as a mini guide for you, but also to share my thinking in the one that I ordered, and hopefully that can help you as well. I'm Alex, and I do down-to-earth tech videos. I split this video into sections for each use case. I'm pretty sure I'm not able to cover every single case out there. That'll be a very long video, but I did try to cover the most common ones. And depending on the use case, where it makes sense, we could actually save some money here, with M1 options, no less. To get us going, let's get some ground rules, or rather, three guidelines here so that you know where I'm coming from and to help you navigate the rest of the video. Guideline number one, if buying the latest and greatest makes you happy and you can afford it, of course, then why the hell not? And who am I at the end of the day, right? I know that's what I said on the title because that's how YouTube works, but I'm in no position to tell you what to do. I'm here to help you, not to dictate anything that you do. Guideline number two is a cliche one, but it still applies here. You know, people say, don't buy something on the promise of what it can do in the future, buy based on what it can do now, based on what you need right now. That's really important. Guideline number three, I'm just a guy on the internet, <laughs> but I have bought my fair share of Apple laptops and everything else. So I know a thing or two about Apple's tactics and I've been burnt a few times myself. So if nothing else, I can share with you what I've learned from that experience. So the first use case is quite a straightforward one. Who am I talking about here? This is Joe. Joe has an older laptop that is not an M1 MacBook Air. So it's like an Intel i5 machine, maybe even an i7. Joe really appreciates mobility. He travels quite a bit and he's regularly working from cafes and commuting on trains. Joe really cares about performance too, but that's not Joe's primary focus right now. Joe does not want to be upgrading his laptop every year, despite what Apple keeps telling him. He just wants a laptop that will last and be able to cope with his workload. Joe doesn't really do any graphic intensive work. He does like the occasional gaming and only sometimes he does some casual video or photo editing as well. To me, Joe is Apple's primary target for this laptop. Some sensible people out there will say that Joe could go for a ThinkPad or a Surface. And if Joe really had a preference towards Windows, there's nothing wrong with that. Those are great machines and there's quite a few others as well. But for a lot of people, and you might be in this position, who have an older laptop and have been thinking about getting a Mac for a while, you know, you've kind of been trying to say, do I need a Mac, you know, is, is this the right time to approach it? The M2 MacBook Air could be a good first choice for your first MacBook Air. Okay, Alex, great, I already knew all of that, but you know, what specs should I go for? Or should Joe go for? In this scenario, I would keep everything as close to base model as possible. The only upgrade I would recommend is the memory. Unless, of course, your workload is way below the examples of memory that I'm giving you here on the screen. The reason why I'm recommending upgrading the memory in this use case is because memory, unlike storage, is not something that you have a workaround for, right? You're kind of stuck with it. If your budget allows, I would definitely consider going to 16 gig RAM and keeping everything else the same, right? For, for Joe, that use case is kind of, you know, pretty much what covers everyone else. If you're concerned about space on the hard drive, I would strongly recommend using a fast external SSD. I have a perfect solution for this that not only solves the storage problem, but will give you even more ports, which is great for the MacBook Air. This is the Acasis Hub. I have just reviewed this on the channel a couple of days ago, so I'll leave links down below for you. The second use case is more like a caveat to the first one. Despite what Apple and some YouTubers try to tell you, you don't always have to have the latest. If you already have the M1 MacBook Air or you have a Windows machine that is not struggling and you know, you're fine with it for the moment for your current workload, remember guideline number one, save some money. Why upgrade it, right? Honestly, Apple and other manufacturers, they're not stopping their machine anytime soon. They'll keep chucking new devices out there. There will be a new machine next year probably. And maybe that's when you consider it. Saving cash is always gonna be a good option in my book. The third use case is a more complex one. Who am I talking about in this one? I kind of run out of ideas for a character, but in this one, you do appreciate the mobility aspect like Joe did, but you care more about performance. So in this case, you're likely to be running multiple higher intensity apps, something like editing dozens of raw photos at once, whilst at the same time, dabbling with 3D modeling and perhaps editing 4K videos, just like this one. So nothing too layered or too complex with lots of visual effects just a simple 4K video. Although 
I am going to be trying to push this machine myself when I get it, you know, just to kind of give it some real work rather than using benchmarks and things like that. But in this case specifically, the GPU and memory would be the upgrades I'd focus on, followed by a little bit more storage. The reason, or reasons I should say, that I would upgrade the storage to say one terabyte in this case, is one, you're likely to be generating quite a lot of heavy files and external storage, whilst very useful, can be a little inconvenient at times if you're using it a lot and you're on the go. And two, computers haven't really changed that much in the way they manage memory, despite the marketing that we see from Apple. Sure, it's much more efficient now and you know, with this new more integrated architecture, but memory on the Mac OS still uses internal SSD storage, you know, when needed for those really busy periods for swap memory. Don't worry, we're not gonna go down that rabbit hole here, but you don't wanna be squeezing too much into the internal SSD and running the risk of Mac OS not having enough space to manage the memory. So I'd go for 16 gig RAM still as a minimum, a 10 core GPU and 512 is a bit small. So I'll probably go for one terabyte here. And I would put a huge caveat here and you probably already know this, all my viewers are, you know, I probably don't need to tell you this, but if your upgrade is bringing you closer to the price of the newer MacBook Pros, then, you know, I can't really give you a proper recommendation just yet because anyone trying to do that now before they actually test it and compare uh, would be kind of irresponsible. But I would recommend waiting for those first reviews and comparisons to come in, including my own, if you can afford the time, which is another consideration, right? Because if you don't pre-order, you're likely to be waiting six to eight weeks if not more, you know, that's a lesson I've learned with my recent purchases from Apple, Samsung as well, to be fair. But if you can wait, then the good news is I will be comparing the M2 MacBook Air with the performance of the M1 Pro and M1 Max MacBook Pros, which brings me to an important point. YouTube is a bit weird sometimes and they don't always put my videos in front of the right audience. So I would really appreciate if you like this video to give it a thumbs up because it really helps. I'm still a small channel and I will be pre-ordering this machine. So you can expect lots more videos about it, the best accessories for it and things like that. The other benefit to you, of course, is that I'm here at least once a week with a new down to earth tech video for you. Didn't you used to say tech reviews? Yeah, but this is not a review really, is it? Okay, so there's loads to consider here and hopefully I already gave you a nice breakdown in, in a way that's helpful. But here's my rationale and buy my own machine, which hopefully will help you even further with your decision. Sometimes I don't wanna bring my 16 inch MacBook Pro with me on the train and things like that. I, I've lost a MacBook Pro on the train before, so I'm kind of paranoid about that. But also I have the M1 iPad Pro and I try to do the best I can with the tablet. But if you've been following the channel, you know that I'm quite salty about the M1 iPad Pro and my relationship with Apple since that device has been very much a, a love and hate. And, but I won't get into that right now. The problem is I'm not as useful with the M1 iPad Pro as I thought I would be or as I wanted it to be. I'm actually using the Tab S8 Ultra more recently uh, as, a, as a second machine. But despite all the processing power on the iPad and the amazing display, when it comes to video editing, for example, tablets aren't, aren't quite there yet. The MacBook Air for me would slot right in between those two devices where it is portable enough and powerful enough for me to do my work. I don't think having two laptops is, is the right way to go, by the way, but I'm, I'm just saying if I didn't have the MacBook Pro, actually the M2 MacBook Air would be a great machine for me for, for my editing workflow. If only the M2 MacBook Air had touch screen, huh? Yeah, but Apple, they're not that stupid, right? Profit first. So that's my use case, and here's how I configured my machine. You know, starting with the processor, I'm not gonna go overboard with that because I believe the M1 chip was already very strong even for video editing. So like I said, in my case, I already have the MacBook Pro, you know, it's a completely maxed out M1 Max. When it comes to memory though, I do use quite a lot of memory in my video editing. So, you know, I'm multitasking with dozens of tabs in Chrome, Photoshop is open, Lightroom is open, Final Cut Pro, of course. So in my case, I'm gonna upgrade the memory to 16 gig. On the storage side, I'm not gonna touch it. I'm gonna just go with base model. Why? Because with Thunderbolt and something like the Akasis Hub or their Akasis SSD enclosure, I have multiple ways now of extending the internal storage and having fast access to it as well, which is important. The best thing for my workflow is that I can move between the MacBook Pro and the MacBook Air and the tablet if I wanted to using this because it's got the storage in here and that, that will be my kind of in-between device. You know, this will enable me to switch between devices without having to reformat anything. There's another use case which is 
you do have already an M1 MacBook Air, but it's underperforming. And I understand that in that case, you know, you have, you have to have an upgrade. But I think even in this case, it's better to wait because the MacBook Pro may be a better option for you. Unless you're settled on the form factor, you like the MacBook Air, you know, the aspect of it that's been so light and thin. And if you're confident based on what you've seen from Apple and YouTubers like me that the M2 will be sufficient, then it's just a case of choosing the specs Then you don't have to wait. But like I said before, if you can wait for those comparisons between the M2 MacBook Air and the M1 Pro, the 14 inch, for example, MacBook Pro, then probably is best to wait. Look, it's always hard to cover every single use case and, and not making the video two hour long, but this was a kind of an educated broad brush view of you know how typical usages and how much memory processing power and storage that those would require. I really wanna hear from you though, which one are you ordering? Has this video been helpful? Have you got any more questions? I'll try to answer them. And I can't wait to unbox mine and test it eventually, give you some proper reviews. And I really think you're gonna like this playlist that I've done over here for you. And YouTube reckons that you're gonna like this video over here. I'm approaching 200 videos on the channel, so it's bound to be one there that you like. See you soon. Don't worry, I'm not gonna get into that whole rabbit hole here. That whole rabbit hole.